Good afternoon, and welcome to our recital. I'm Debbie Smith, and I am the parish secretary for Sacred Heart St. Francis. Thirty years ago, our parish was blessed with the gift of beautiful, glorious music. Music that filled our church with the glory of God. Today, we celebrate our organist who gave us this gift. So on his 30th anniversary, I am honored to introduce my friend, Don McMahon.
I am overwhelmed with gratitude to all of you for being here with me today as we listen to and experience the music of this wonderful organ. And you know, it is Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart who called the organ king of instruments, and he did so for many reasons, um, some of which are um, the organ is um, one of the oldest known instruments of the world. Organs existed even before the birth of Christ. Um, as you just heard, the organ is massive in sound. It takes up the most space. Um, it's a wonderful sound um, to lead us in worship, to support our singing. And when you have all that air going into the bellows, um, then going into the wind chest, into the pipes, it's like a gigantic set of lungs. Um, so with these thoughts in mind, it's, it is really my sincerest hope as well as my prayer that you will be moved in some way by the music you will hear this afternoon. Um, next, we are going to hear two pieces by Johann Sebastian Bach. And Bach was the greatest composer who ever lived and one of the greatest composers of all time. It is amazing how Bach could create such beautiful and exquisite music even when he was writing about subjects such as sin and death, as you will hear in the next piece. Following that, you will hear a prelude and fugue, and the prelude begins with a brilliant pattern of sparkling harp-like arpeggios played with the hands and the feet. Now, after the prelude comes the second movement of that piece, and it's called the fugue, and the fugue will begin with a simple melody played with the left hand, then the right hand, then the feet, and finally both hands and feet together. Um, before we hear the Bach, I also want to point out a few things about this organ, um, one of which it does so very much. Um, we have a wonderful palette of sounds that serve um, Christ and lead us in worship. For instance, we have nice brass sounds, very bold trumpety sounds. And a complete contrast to those bold and brassy sounds, we have very, very gentle strings. Now we also have very, very bright, sparkling flutes. And then we have sounds on the organ, which are unique to the organ itself. They do not imitate another uh, an instrument of the orchestra. They are called principles or diapasons, and principles and diapasons um, on an organ sound like this, or the classic organ sound. And we even have a clarinet. And there's even an oboe, in this case, the French name, Aubois. Au 
we put all those together and we have just a grand massive sound but they can also be played um, by themselves and in smaller combinations with other instruments so we're going to hear all of this um, this afternoon and I'm very happy that you're here with me um, now on to the Bach we have a beautiful chorale prelude and I hope you enjoy it
and there you have a fugue. I have a lot of fun with this next piece for a lot of reasons, um, to name only a few. It is very intense, and it's a little frightening at times. Um, we have these very turbulent, mysterious rolling chords, um, arpeggios in both hands. There is an arpeggio. Um, and they spring upward, and then they fall back down. A lot of turbulence. It's like, a, it's like a, um, an ocean. Um, and then you will notice in your program that the piece is called a Takata. And a Takata is a musical form. It originated in northern Italy in the 16th century. Now, the origin of the word, actually, it was, it was called, um, is toccare, which means to touch. And toccatas are customarily played at a very quick speed. Um, and the organist is required to strike the keys of the organ, harpsichord, clavichord, whatnot, very rapidly. So here is the, the toccata on a Gregorian theme.
I'd like to say a few words about this processional by William Mathias. It's a fun piece to play, and I know there are some choir members here today, and I'm very, very happy to, that you're, you're here today. Um, the choir actually learned and performed very, very successfully a very, very tricky, intricate piece by William Mathias, who is the composer of this next selection. And the piece um, that the choir learned is called Lift Up Your Heads, O Ye Gates. We had a lot of fun with it because it have a, has a lot of intricate rhythms to it, a lot of quirky syncopations, um, just a lot of fun. And we performed it, they performed it extremely um, uh, well um, during Advent and during Christmas. It had a, some of an agitation, nervous type with it, so it kind of went well as an Advent piece as we somewhat nervously anticipate the birth of Christ. So it was perfect music, especially for Advent. Um, I want to point that out because those of us in the choir who have sung the Lift Up Your Heads, O Ye Gates, who are listening today, you're going to hear a lot of similarities between what we sang in this processional. Um, and those of you who are new to William Mathias, I just hope you enjoy it.
Fede Creator Spiritus, maintains to us room visitor in place super not grazio, quae to create a steepic
the Roman Catholic Diocese of Burlington has designated this year as the year of peace. And for me, when music is shared with others, and it is shared in the spirit of goodwill and camaraderie, there is peace. There is no doubt of that. The organ now is going to take on a completely different sound, a different character and form, as we listen to a selection titled, The Peace May Be Exchanged. <laughs> 